This episode of Passionate Living is sponsored by BBB, Better Business Bureau of Upstate New York, and BAM, Buffalo Advanced Medical Acupuncture. embarked into his career as a DJ in the 1960s in Buffalo, New York. He quickly rose to fame as a top 40 radio host in places such as Hartford, Connecticut, Cleveland, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, and of course his hometown of Buffalo, New York. Reynolds is often regarded as the very first shock jock, way before the days of Howard Stern and others of his genre. His oftentimes outlandish stunts brought him widespread fame, such as playing an endless loop of a Four Seasons song over and over for an hour, causing his station manager, the police, and the paramedics, just in case Joey was unconscious, to show up and break down the door of the DJ booth. The Four Seasons thanked him for helping to break open their new hit by writing him a jingle based on Big Girls Don't Cry for his Joey Reynolds show. Eventually, Joey ended up in New York City as a talk show host at WOR Radio. The Joey Reynolds Show was aired coast to coast. So, I'm not sure if this introduction is to let you know more about Joey's wild and zany life or to warn you of what's ahead in this wild and zany interview. But either way, I know you'll enjoy his bright wit and his hairdresser, Gino Martelli, who's going to share with us his amazing career and newfound passion for health. So join us as Joey Reynolds gets a haircut. Hi, Gino. Well, hi, Joey. Long time no <laughs> see you, my God. I want to look like you when I grow up. Yes. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Miller is great. She's a wonderful okay. hostess, but she's also my spiritual advisor, you know. Is she? Yeah. Because she's uh, stayed true to people like Wayne Dyer and some good friends who have been uh, spiritual. She has a spiritual show. Wow. Yeah. Oh, God bless you, Annie. <laughs> That's we, why she doesn't have we, any we, money. We got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm broke, too. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> hey. Gino, yeah, I, you. when you told me you were 80 years old, I almost fell onto the floor. I cannot wow. believe you're 80 well. years old. There's no way... You're 80 years old. Yes, there is. Yeah. There is? There's a way? Because I, I, I don't... I, well, there's a way right. to keep, uh -huh. to maintain yourself, to stay young and healthy. It's, it's all about good nutrition. Right. And it's also really good about getting our butt into the gym. Now, I'm in a gym at least three to, th to four hours a day, six wow. days a week. Wow. Plus, I do my stretching and, uh, and mm -hmm. all that little thing uh, at home. Right. And, I do a lot of hanging with calisthenic, wow. and um, yeah, uh, that's, that's what I love to do. That's why you look like you're 40. R yes, yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. This was your passion you were telling it was me my to passion, do here, yes. and Joey Reynolds, of course, is your passion, yeah. but now calisthenics is right, your passion. Right, right. Well, the thing is, I, the reason why I really had to retire, because I, I set a date for it when I uh -huh. reached 70, I need to retire, because my body just couldn't take it anymore. My legs yeah, were hurting me, yeah, and concrete, yeah. and it was, and the, uh, it, being, out of shape, I had more medical issues. I just retired, and then suddenly uh, I came along. <laughs> show them your. Show them okay, your all right. Oh Twist my arm. Joey's Joey's right. gonna change it up. This is an 80 year old guy. Look at this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to check I mean, out I, some ads on a guy. I so, can't go where he goes. This, this, is, this shirt is, is medium, and it's too big for me. Wow. Wait a minute, he's got the sound thing on there. Wow. I used, I used to be like 205 pounds, and now I'm 155. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Look at yeah. this body of yours. It's all about Whoa, calisthenics. Whoa, man, 80 cool years old. Well, yours is not too bad either. And, and right, yeah, oh, thank you, yeah, Joey. Yeah, really, but as I said. you don't look like well, this. But, so but right there's now, hope for me. So there's hope for me yet. Yeah. I, I'd like to show you some of my reels that I do. I'm on Instagram. It's called Martelli2322 uh -huh. Instagram. And you can see me doing all kinds of things like windshield Whoa. wipers, upside down, doing side to side, doing L shapes, doing all kinds of things, you know. Uh -huh. And that's what really is so good for your lower body and for your tummy, right. for your entire body. But hanging, I never knew this. Hanging takes away so much pain out of your body. And it just makes you feel taller, skinnier. But if you keep that, if you do it every 
say six days a week, you know, because right. right now I'm addicted to it. So, right. and because I, I can see the results in my body, so therefore, I I just love it. I'm really so crazy. So if I about hang it. around, I'm gonna look yeah. like you. Well, you will in about well, two days. Two days. <laughs> Three days. Although I Believe did, me. my brother got those gravity boots after mm -hmm. years ago after he watched that Richard Gere movie where, you know, he worked out with the gravity boots. Right, right. And I got stuck. Wow. I, I couldn't I get up. I don't know how I got up. I dragged myself on the leg of my jeans. So when you got out of it, did you get back into them? No, no. no I was done with it? gravity boots, yeah. Oh, you yeah. should have got back into it. So you're going to cut well, this guy's hair over anyone, here? Anyone that calls me. I, I don't want to cut my hair. I want him to cut my fat. Paul Mitchell. I have to be an assistant here and get your towel. Yeah, yeah, just make so sure. Put it on his... Yeah, no, no, just put it on this lap right there. Uh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. Thanks. Gino yes. used to have all the girls because he looked like Warren Beatty back then. <laughs> Doing shampoo. Remember Hairspray? Wasn't that the name of the no, movie? No, Shampoo. Oh, yeah, one of them. Gino, was... you still look like Warren Beatty. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, boy, did he if have the girls. I only had hair. Oh, no. Oh, my that's God. Why, that, is that's why I was married 12 times. Shave. Gino, you oh, have no. never washed my hair before. Do you know that? Wow. Gino, what you're doing with it's your hands? The first hands? time. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's something, you know, once you learn it, you never forget. It's like riding a bike, right? A bicycle. <laughs> you know, I just want you to right wash there. my hair. It's <laughs> really pleasure. Great. Uh, okay, that's 120, no, this, 125. Wow, Joey. Crazy. you got to be like in heaven. Yeah, well, this is a very expensive haircut that's free. <laughs> 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 you got that right. Oh, boy. Oh, I love this guy. I love this guy. Isn't that amazing? We, we met, he is, Joey Reynolds is my oldest living friend. Oh, God. Wow. I'm, your, I, I'm hours younger than him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe 62 years or yeah. 63. Yeah. Something like that. Tell him how you used to cut my hair on the air when we oh did the show on WKBW. God. It was a Trump look. <laughs> <laughs> like really, you know, a <laughs> lot of hair. A lot of hairspray, a lot of hairspray. A lot of lies. I think, I think we would use at least a good half a can of hairspray. A big transformation. On my pal yeah. Joey Reynolds. Is this where you tell me how to cut? Yeah, I can show you. Wait a minute. Take a pair of scissors. <laughs> no, I'm just going to cut your hair up to here. Is that all right? No. no. It's all because of you. You were spreading the word of me cutting your hair, how you used to end up end your show every night, hair by, oh, dressed by Red Cook, and then hair by <laughs> Gino Martelli, remember that? <laughs> Forgot. And the only thing he didn't teach me was how to give, how to give autographs. And, and when someone asked me for an autograph, what do you want my autograph for? I'm not popular. He says, yes, you are. That's pretty interesting, Gino. You had uh, wow. uh, the corner on the market with all these women. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Joey, we really can't talk stuck about those beautiful on the women. Party. Yeah, well, come because on. I want to. I want to. I'm gonna. You know, to all the girls I loved before, I, it's just I like. I know the show is passionate it's, living, but I didn't uh, think that we were gonna focus solely on I, the passion. I, I'm really kind of embarrassed about that <laughs> because I was just a bad. Well, guy. you would get a, a you would get a haircut and a hickey. I mean, where else would you do that? <laughs> My mom. Yeah, what about your mom? Don't she you go there? She hated me for what? Oh, of course. Who I was. She was at home rolling said, gnocchis. Mom, Ma, you created She's me. She's making gnocchis and you're out there making love. Get out of here. <laughs> well, after we're through here today, I'm going to go to the Tomb of the Unknown Boulder in Chictawaga. <laughs> <laughs> the true way. You know, my, my sister used to, when they were a long time married and kids, and they were having that... Uh, you know that time when you have a rest in your life after you're married a long time and you, and you lose the excitement and the kids are grown? So they would go out to Salvador's on a date, but separately. She would go there first, sit at the bar, and then he would come and they'd pretend that he was picking her up. That's how they kept their marriage alive. Until one day someone else came <laughs> <laughs> and swept them off their but she did. She used to do that over there. Well, I think this is a great station. And you guys, it is a great station. It is. It's great. And, you know, having you around to do this and John DeSillo and the, and the yeah. people who are dedicated to this, that's local television. 
And we need to have that in every city. Being like a human being. Ah, Joey. Isn't look he at looking, your looking, hair, isn't he looking man. fabulous? Look at you. You just wow. want me to, as he's talking. You just want me to stop talking. That's <laughs> no, continue, please. <laughs> but we want you to realize that Joey, you're looking, you're you looking younger. Joey, you want to share with your monologue? I, my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. Yeah, well, go get my cheesecake. <laughs> okay, cheesecake. Yeah, cats rolling. Cats wearing one of my aprons. You know the Joey Reynolds cheesecake. Oh yeah. I See, want I want to be like Paul Newman. I want to never have anybody uh, recognize me as being a movie star or TV or okay. radio star. I want so, to know that I, I I'm making food. <laughs> I'm glad I found you. The cheesecakes, right. Joey. I found your cheesecake. Would you like to try it? I have tried your cheesecakes, and these well, are Well, why don't you give Tony the job, but let... Cheesecakes in the world. Yeah, of course. Danny, you're in great shape. You don't worry about what you eat. You, you should have my cheesecake. You need, yeah, you need to fatten up a little. <laughs> <laughs> Even John DeSillo here is running John. now, and he looks great. Look at John. He's is in he, good shape. Is he looking better? You look good, man. Yeah, he's, looks, really? he's in great shape. Yeah. Now, he looks a lot younger than us because he is. Because he is. <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got to be honest about it. Gino is, he is a miracle worker, and I do miss him cutting my hair, as you saw. And there's a reason, because he makes me look great. For what I Thank have you. to work with, he makes me look great. <laughs> uh, well, it was so fun to meet you and hear of your passions. I know about your passions because. <laughs> Joey Reynolds cheesecake. Joe, the best. Oh, Joey yeah. Reynolds oh, cheesecake God, yeah. and Joey Reynolds humor. Oh, right. I love yeah. humor. And, and you know he put a lot of that humor in his cheesecake. And John Dursillo's oh. editing. Yeah, Wait till that. you see John's oh, editing. <laughs> so much of this that you're watching Just now, sure John you scrapped it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Hugging you. What a pleasure. Thank you, Gino. Hugging you. Hi, Kat. Welcome hey, to the Better Business Bureau. Thank you. Let me show you around. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait to see. All right. Um, well, this building we built just over 15 years ago. Okay. We, we were in a variety of places in downtown Buffalo, uh, but this is the lobby and our mission and vision and uh, some of our own goals uh, that over there and over here are some of the awards that we've won, most of them uh, pretty recent, uh, uh, we've done a lot of things that we've actually been able to help other right. better business bureaus with. Oh, that's wonderful. How oh, fun. <laughs> this is this is my home away from home. I, I actually probably spend more time here than I do at home. Right. Uh, but uh, it it's very much my space, and and uh, I love it. It's it's convenient. It's easy. You're and like me. You do organized piles. I am. Everything's in piles. <laughs> you'll see that. Uh, and I have a pretty good sense of what it's what's in each of the piles yep, and, and what what needs to be done with it. Warren, thank you so much for being here today on Passionate Living. I'm so thrilled to be here. We're uh, really excited to be a part of this. It is such a joy. And yeah, you're going to be an ongoing part of Passionate Living with the Better Business Bureau. And I want to share today why this is such a resource for people living their passions, doing their own businesses, following their dreams, and, and a little bit about your passion for it as well. Well, thank you. The uh, I, I actually have been involved. This is my 45th year. Wow. I wound up on the board uh, in the 1979 when, when we were uh, meeting with business owners uh, about the uh, building of the transit uh, and, and just the, uh, I guess I drank the Kool-Aid at a very young, <laughs> young age. The idea of being a part of this for my whole adult life has been just a wonderful blessing for yeah. me. What is it about the Better Business Bureau that would cause you to just invest so much love and passion in it all these years? Well, it really started with my father. My mm -hmm. father uh, never made a ton of money, but he was uh, the most ethical person that I knew. Uh, and, and in fact, I told the story at his funeral that the, one of our major suppliers came up to me and said, uh, that that my dad was the only customer he had that would tell him when he sent too many by mistake, not only when it was too few. Uh, and my father's theory was if it wasn't his, it wasn't his. And, and um, I think uh, certainly in business that uh, resounded with me. I tried to live my, my business life like that. And, and BBB 
uh, epitomizes that. That's great. And and there's a an individual out there who's watching who has a business. How does this help them? Is they're living their passion? They're doing a great job. They're they've started their dream restaurant or coffee shop or whatever it is that they have a light for in their life. What is it that can help them with this? Well, the, my elevator speech, which, which not everybody <laughs> likes to hear uh, internally, but fundamentally we sell trust. That, that people uh, that, that meet our standards and are able to display the logo, and there's so much uh, mistrust, misinformation in the marketplace at all levels, that it, it just, it gives businesses that have met our standards the opportunity to tell the public that they've been vetted and that they, they uh, are a trustworthy business. And our, our resolution rate on complaints, we take complaints against uh, businesses in our 48 county service area, and our resolution rate overall is about 70%. With our members, it's 98 wow. percent. So, you know, from a standpoint of if something goes wrong, what's the possibility that it's going to be made right? It's uh, statistically significant uh, right. that if you're dealing with a member. So, Warren, tell me what's in here. This looks like your whole history of the Better Business Bureau. Well, it is actually. Last year, 2023, we were 100 years old, wow. and we created a timeline. I actually had hired a historian. Uh, that came in and, and went through our records and there are some great pictures but the bureau system started in 1912 so you can see up there uh, some the bureau started as advertising committees but this is a, a the rest of it is a timeline of the upstate New York Better Business Bureau started in Buffalo uh, in 1923 and right up until 2023. Oh there's you I am on there. I, I, <laughs> Good looking I, uh, guy right I, down here. I, and, and it's a current picture, uh, but it's at 1979, which was when I joined the board. Okay. Uh, they, my, <laughs> my staff said I had all these other people on there that, that I, I should have myself on there. Tell me what you do here at the BBB? I've been with BBB for a little over a year now. Right. Um, I am the Marketing and Communications Director. Mm -hmm. So my job is very multifaceted, <laughs> as I like to tell everybody. Tell me a little bit about your passion for this organization. What lights you up about it? Well, I love being able to help consumers make smart buying decisions and give them the tools they need to protect themselves from scams and fraud. Um, scams are everywhere these days, unfortunately, especially with the internet and so many people doing their shopping online. Um, unfortunately, everybody's vulnerable, but right. through my job, I'm able to help educate people on how they can protect themselves. If I've been able to help one person prevent themselves from falling victim to a scam or one of their loved ones, then I've done my job. Right. Yeah, so it, it feels really great to be able to go out in the community and share the wealth of information that BBB has. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. My fellow cat. Yes, cat with a C. <laughs> Warren, if there is somebody out there that's going to be starting a business and hanging their shingle out for whatever it is that they're going to be bringing to the community to make this world a better place with their, with their light, with their work, what would you tell them? starting out a business because you've been a business owner you've also run the better business bureau all these years well i i and i actually started a business uh, back in the late 1970s early 80s uh, and i think um, that it, when you have a passion understand that there's more to business than that passion so if you know i i, I actually facilitated a program at canisius uh, a number of years ago that was somebody was a great gardener and people said you ought to open a gardening, a landscaping business. And they didn't know anything about HR and accounting and legal and uh, you know all of the stuff that goes into business. Uh, and, and I would just say make sure that, you, that you're prepared to 
make a business out of your passion. I wound up uh, making a passion out of my my avocation, which had been my volunteer work, which right. uh, was a very special opportunity for me to be able to have had a business life and, and now to be managing a better business. Warren, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited that you're going to be a part of our show and share your wonderful wisdom with our viewers and what a joy. Well, thank you. We're excited. The BBB is excited to be a part of helping uh, people to live their passions uh, and we're, we're actually thrilled to be here. Wonderful. Thanks. You're welcome. Kyle, our show is Passionate Living, and it's people living their passion and using them to make a difference. How passionate are you guys about your food? Oh, super passionate. Um, I think that's <laughs> what drives us, uh, you know, outside of helping people. We want to feed them, we want them coming in happy and leaving as your family. I think the inflection of your voice and just a lot of things like that really goes a long way with, with the guests. So, right. Yeah. Uh, this is our second year in a row highlighting you, so oh, to, nice, if I huh? come in, will you make me a oh, gluten free I'd love something? We could recreate the scene from Goodfellas. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! Cabana, you'll go oh, in, we'll my we got to film that. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got meatballs. I can't eat them because I can't do gluten. So I have my taste testers here. These are a little warm. Blow on it first. Mm, I can tell you the sauce is amazing. I can smell the sauce from here. It smells so good. I love Osteria. They have the best sea bass at their restaurant. Yeah, what do you think? Um, like a 10. A 10? Holy cow, she gave it a 10. That's a lot, because you gave a 9. It was something I thought was a 10 before, so 10 is really, really good. <laughs> Camille, you're, gonna, you're driving, so it doesn't matter if I sample, right? <laughs> right. And what is your name? Hi, my name is Cassie. I'm one of the tasting room managers um, at Three Brothers Wineries in Geneva. It's right at the top of Seneca Lake. Okay. Where did this bombshell drink come from? Because I don't even drink it. I want to drink it just because it's so bombshell. Our bombshells, they are hard cider bombshells. It's actually made. So at the winery, we have three wineries and a brewery on the estate. So our Warhorse Brewing Company um, produce, makes and produce the hard ciders. Oh, so, okay. yeah, so the apple bombshells. So these are just a few flavors that we brought today, but we have tons of different ciders that we make on the estate. Go ahead, give that a shot. And this is the, this is the apple strawberry bombshell. apple cider bombshell. I want to smell it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh my God. Oh, I didn't expect this. Um, oh, my God. everybody, everybody, nobody expects it. It is amazing. This smells like, like an orange hub of bubba gum. Doesn't it smell like that? A taste. It tastes like it, but with a kick. Yeah. I can't believe there's any alcohol yeah. in it. Our, our side, right, it doesn't taste like a lot of alcohol. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, this is 7.8%, oh, you know, God. ABVs on there. <laughs> Where's Rebot? He's got to get the camera. Yeah, you look so familiar, Chef. Happy to be here at the Taste of Buffalo. I, I think I've seen you somewhere before. I am passionate about pasta, Catherine. <laughs> pasta? It's all about the pasta? All about the pasta, the sauce, and living your best life. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. Remember to press like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really love us supporting what we're doing, become a member and we'll give you some great behind the scenes stuff that nobody else gets to see. And also continue your exploration of passionate living by watching one of these awesome videos. Thanks again.